Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today we have the 13 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max with us and we are going to test the cameras. Apple has made a lot of improvements this year but how much better is it exactly than the previous 12 Pro? That is exactly what we'll see in this particular video. Super Pro Max excited. So without wasting any time, let's get started. One good thing about the iPhones this year is the 13 Pro and the Pro Max both have the same cameras. Unlike the previous generation where the 12 Pro Max had a slightly larger sensor and a better camera system than the 12 Pro. So if you're not a fan of big screens but you still want the best camera system that Apple makes, you can still stick with the 13 Pro as well. In terms of lenses, both the phones look pretty similar but the lenses on the iPhone 13 Pro are huge and the camera bump is very huge, literally. But there's a reason for this. The bigger lenses lets in more amount of light and it's supposed to be better in low light which we'll test later. Before we talk about the hardware changes, let's talk about a very interesting software change and that is cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is basically portrait mode for videos but on steroids. It's using software to detect the edges and subjects and creates a fake depth of field effect. A lot of phones can do portrait video, but only iPhone 13 gives you the flexibility to change the depth effect in post. The autofocus is pretty good and it does a really good job in detecting the subjects. It's a good feature, but at the end it's software based and not hardware based. So don't expect it to be perfect. In post, you can change the focus points, set keyframes and even change the depth of field. The cinematic mode also works with the front facing camera. Right now, what I'm able to see, it looks pretty good, but obviously it's not perfect. This isn't something made for serious videographers, but for content creators out there who are not very serious about videography, this can be a good feature. Let's start with the biggest camera upgrade Apple made this year, and that is with the ultra wide lens. I use the ultra wide lens a lot on my iPhones because I love the look of it. I love the images it produces. The ultra wide lens on both the phones look great but I still would prefer the look of the iPhone 13 simply because it has deeper blacks resulting in more contrast which looks more realistic and punchy at the same time. The 13 is also sharper than the 12 and it has less noise in the shadow areas. The dynamic range looks pretty similar to me. My favorite feature of the iPhone 13 ultra wide lens is the macro feature. So when I get close to the subject, it automatically shifts from the standard lens to the ultra wide lens and now it can focus up to 2 cm. This is a big deal because now you can do macro photography, videography, slow motion, time lapses without using any external lenses. Talking about the telephoto lens, the 13 Pro has a 3x optical zoom compared to the 2x of the 12 Pro and 2.5x of the 12 Pro Max. The difference between 2.5x and 3x won't seem like much but the 3x optical zoom gives me more reach, more compression and it's a very good focal length for shooting portraits. One difference you will notice when you zoom in is the 13 is definitely sharper. The telephoto lens on the 12 looks a bit washed out with less contrast and less vibrant colors. There was always a difference in image quality between the standard lens and the telephoto lens. The difference is still there but it has reduced a lot. Since I got the 13 Pro, I've been loving the telephoto lens and if you're getting this phone, you're going to love it too. I have noticed one small issue when using the telephoto lens on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So just because the zoom range is more, just because you're zooming in more, even a bit of shake gets more exaggerated and while composing the image, I feel the 12 is much more stable than the 13. Now this is not an issue and the images are tack sharp, the videos are sharp and you don't see much shake but while composing the image this can be an issue. Talking about the standard lens, both the phones look pretty similar, the 13 is a bit brighter and vibrant but you will start seeing more differences as you start shooting in low light. The iPhone 13s really excel in low light conditions. Before we talk about that, it's time to thank the sponsors of the video who made this video possible and that is Skillshare. I use Skillshare very often. It's an online learning platform which has a lot of classes belonging to different genres like photography, filmmaking and many others. 
I completed a course on iPhone food photography by Melina Hammer where she talks about planning the shoot, food styling and even her shooting process with just an iPhone. She also shares her editing process on the iPhone. If you want to learn something new, upgrade your skills, check out Skillshare, link is in the description below. The first thousand people to click on the link get a one month free Skillshare membership. Let's jump to low light photography. This is really where the iPhone 13 beats iPhone 12 by a bigger margin thanks to the wider aperture of the lenses. The photos are not only sharper, but they have less noise and more accurate colors. The photos definitely look a lot better than the last year. I'm really impressed with the low light performance. This was all about photography. Now talking about videography, there's nothing much to talk about because both the videos look pretty similar. And that's not a bad thing because the iPhone 12 Pro Max is already a very good phone for video. The videos are crisp, colors are vibrant, high dynamic range and the stabilization is one of the best I've seen in smartphone. Apart from the cinematic mode, the only update the 13 Pro got over the 12 Pro is shooting in ProRes. Now ProRes videos will be less compressed, hence it should have better details and better colors. Personally, for me, I'm not going to use this feature. I still have to wait and see how significant the difference is going to be. But for one minute ProRes 4K video, it's going to take 6 GB. And if you don't have the 1 TB variant, it's not going to make sense. And also, you need a very strong machine to edit those videos. One area where I'm very disappointed is the flare issue. This issue is very prominent with the iPhone 12 and I genuinely expected it to improve this year. But unfortunately, it did not. Overall, the iPhone 13 Pro has a better camera than the 12 Pro. Apple has not done anything crazy this year. They have made several small updates and the images do look better than last year. Coming back to the question, is it worth the upgrade? If you're a fan of cinematic mode and you want better low light quality, the iPhone 13 is the way to go. Otherwise, you can skip this one. That's it from this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun shooting with the 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max. I'm going to test the 13 Pro Max in more different conditions and I'm going to post more videos so stay tuned for that. And right now I'm in Beavers Lake Montreal. This is my first time. As I said I had a lot of fun shooting this video. So I hope you had a lot of fun watching it too. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.